Let's take a little twirl around the rink with a morning skate edition of the Inside Edge. Here are your hosts, Bob McElligot and Jody Shelley. Today we're at Bridgestone Arena here in Nashville. The Blue Jackets and the Predators getting together. Predators trying to close out their homestand and get a win. A little bit different here uh, for the Nashville Predators. Usually in the chase right now, just struggling to stay in the playoff picture. But before we get to all that, Jody once again has rounded up an A-list guest. And as I always do, I'll let him bring that guy on. Yeah, well, this is a guest. You know, he's a, he's a hockey fan. He's uh, definitely not in, in the hockey as far as uh, the circles, but he's a fan and, and a, definitely a sports personality. He's fall- Who was our first guest? Chris Pronger. I mean, that was very elite. And then from there, we, we went to, I forget who we went to after that. Sean Pronger. Sean Pronger, Pronger which is his brother. We talked some good hockey, and we're, we're proud and, and honored to have Kirk Herbstreet on here. Kirk, thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Love to talk about the Jackets. Anytime. We're here with the Jackets doing a, a shoot-around. Your kids are here. They're excited. Tell us about being a hockey fan living here in Nashville and, and watching the Jackets. How excited are you guys? I, I'll be honest. When, when growing up in Ohio, hockey was not big. You know, we had the, the Dayton Gyms where I grew up in, in Ohio and then the Columbus Chill. And then finally, while I was doing my talk show in Columbus, we got, we got the Blue Jackets. And what was cool about having the Blue Jackets is living in Columbus for so long, it be, Columbus became a major league city. And the Detroit Red Wings were in town, and the New York Rangers were in town, and the Pittsburgh Penguins were in town. And I really think the first four or five, six years of the franchise, it was more about the experience of just going to the arena and seeing these cool teams. And then we started to kind of learn the game, and I became an addict. I mean, I, I've loved the Blue Jackets since day one. And you start to see them grow, and you start to see personalities like yourself come through and, and move on, and then other guys coming up. And then they got a little taste of the playoffs. And so for me, I, I've always been a Blue Jackets fan. We've lived in Nashville for, for three years now. The Preds are just as big here in Nashville as the Jackets are in Columbus. But my kids and I, we, we're diehard Ohio State fans, and and diehard Columbus Blue Jacket fans. So we, uh, we watch them as much now uh, as we did, you know, when we lived in Columbus. And I see your son is a Sergei Bobrovsky fan. I mean, he is, he got to meet him this morning. And it's, it's fun to see that and have that access. But when you look at this roster, this is a young team, and you've, you've watched a lot of Blue Jackets teams, obviously. Is there a lot more excitement for some of these guys like Ryan Johansson and, and the guys you see here now? I really think it started uh, middle half of last year. Um, the energy just seemed to be different. And I was a huge Rick Nash fan. Uh, I think we all love Rick as a guy. Just something when he left, it almost was like, okay, now they're dead. Now they have no chance was kind of the perception on the outside. And I don't know if that fueled the fire in the room, but Cam Atkinson, Ryan Johansson. I mean, a, a lot of guys seem to all of a sudden say, okay, this is our time. Nobody believes in us except us. And they just kind of caught fire and came so close last year to, to making the playoffs. And I think it carried over into this year. And, of course, Bobrovsky, what he brings to the table and the way he played last year. So I think, you know, that there's great teams with great history that you and I were talking about earlier. But I think this team has a, a, enough of a kind of a blue-collar approach to allow them to kind of hang around in this, this playoff mix. And, and if they can stay healthy, maybe they can make a, make a run here into the, into the playoffs. Do you enjoy being a fan, just coming out to a oh, game and watching? Because obviously, I'm sure when you're watching football, whether you're at a game, you're watching it on TV, you're still in that work mode because that's, that's just what happens to us, what we do for a living. But do you like to just come here and just kind of kick back? That's such a, a great question because if you take me away from doing what I do, at the end of the day, I'm just a fan. I'm a fan of college football obviously but I'm a fan of sports I'm a fan of competition and uh, because I've started started to learn some of the <clears throat> personalities in the NHL and watch the Olympics uh, of course you know I, I, I've become a big fan of, of hockey and to be able to not have to have a, a microphone or a, or a camera and to be able to get a hot dog and and just be able to like be a fan uh, whether it's the Reds or the Blue Jackets, whatever it might be, man, I, I absolutely love that aspect of it. That's a great, great thought. Your kids playing any hockey? My youngest wants to. We, uh, my, my older three, I have two that are uh, 13 and one that's 11 and one that's 7. And the older three, they're into more of the traditional sports in America, you know, the baseball and basketball and football. And then my little guy, he's into baseball, basketball, and football. But for whatever reason, he is an absolute. When I say junkie, I'm talking. I'm talking. He wakes up 
seven days a week, straight to NHL.com before breakfast. Before everyone else is asleep. He's on NHL.com. He's waking me up. Dad, 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 Detroit lost last night. We're one point ahead of him for the eighth spot. I mean, I'm seven years old. I'm like, okay, buddy. And then tells me when the game is. I mean, it's – it's not. It's gotten to the point where it's not even cute anymore. It's like getting annoying. I mean, I love it, but he is of all the sports, and I mean, I've introduced him to uh, Jameis Winston. Just won the Heisman Trophy. I introduced him to him. Introduced him. Went, took him into the locker room of Florida State after they won the national championship. He's meet Urban Meyer, Braxton. I mean, they meet everybody. The Reds, Joey Votto, and they're. I mean, they're happy to meet those guys. He's been counting down for the last like 20 days to meet Bobrovsky. He's got a big fat head on his wall, life-size fat head. His entire bedroom door is Bobrovsky stuff. And then he got a chance to meet him this morning and, and get a stick from him. And that, that'll be, of all the things he's done, that'll be the, probably his greatest memory that he's had so far. Well, if he starts skating and if he, if he wants to be a goalie, I got some pads. We can talk at some point. <laughs> okay, right. we'll do that. that is, and I saw your son down there meeting Sergey. He was so fired up. And your wife is there, and she said it's our, it's our Michael Jordan moment. Oh, it is. No, no doubt about it. And then the, the shoot-around, and I've never seen this. This is cool, this, this like, morning skate. And part of the, the deal was Bobrovsky was obviously getting peppered with, with some, some shots. And I was looking for my 7-year-old, and he was behind Bobrovsky in the first row, just kind of, like, watching him. And the pucks were coming off, you know, the fiberglass there. And he's, he's kind of mo- moving his uh, head back. But, yeah, this is, this is a, uh, just, a, as you said, great access and – Really nice of the Blue Jackets and, and the Predators to allow us to come in to, to be able to see this. Well, our good friend Jeff Rimmer is right here, and he sometimes pops in our podcast <laughs> and gives some good insight. And I'm going to ask him, Jeff, I know you're good friends with Herbie here. Anything, anything you want to add to this broadcast? Any questions? Well, I just want to throw out a little uh, bouquet to Herbie because whenever he gets an opportunity on ESPN, and uh, there's some great co- uh, camaraderie there, and, of course, uh, he and uh, Fowler on uh, – uh, college game day. Uh, they each have their own uh, favorites. Uh, Fowler, for some reason, is an Avalanche fan. And then you've got Herbie as the Blue Jacket fan. And it could be a, a national telecast on ABC or ESPN, and he'll sit there and talk about the Blue Jackets. And that's just great. Yeah, I, I did do that. I, I um, You know, if I ever have a chance to brag about anything with the Blue Jackets, look out. Because you're right. I mean, I talk about the Blue Jackets and the Reds as often as I get an opportunity to. In fact, we... Uh, we had Barry Melrose on game day, and it was the morning of January 1st. And I, I can't remember who was playing. In the, it was one of the outdoor games. I think it was maybe in Detroit. So, it was at Toronto? Okay. And I was, my, my question was, when's Columbus going to be able to play in one of those games? Um, and he, he was very, very, uh, very complimentary towards the Blue Jackets at that time. This was January 1st and saying, hey, this is an up-and-coming franchise. They're doing a great job there. And I could see them being in one of these games. I don't know if there's talk about that in Columbus, but how cool would that be to make the horseshoe into an outdoor uh, uh, arena? Are they talking about doing that at all? Well, it's interesting because the ice guy in Columbus was asked to go to Los Angeles and work the outdoor game at Dodger Stadium. And it's interesting to point out that was the toughest game because they didn't know what the weather was going to be like. The fact that they took him there is, is a good sign that they're thinking ahead and we could very well see a game at, uh, at Ohio Stadium. I'm just going to put my plug in right now. If the people over at Ohio State are listening, Ohio State, whoever the – Gene Smith, whoever is over there needs to make the decision. We need to have that game and it needs to be the Detroit Red Wings – and it needs to be cold, and it needs to be gray, and they will get 100,000 people in there, and that would be hype. So let's, let's just make that happen. Gene, if you're out there, my man, let's make that happen. Good thing about a podcast is we can just clip that and email it to them. <laughs> <laughs> it's as simple as that. Kirk, thanks so much for doing this. Uh, I'm glad that you've had a good time here and your family's had a good time, and great to meet you and enjoy everything else here. Thank you. Likewise. Appreciate it. Kirk Street, former Ohio State quarterback, and, of course, on college game day on ESPN doing college football. Jody, let's get to this game quickly for the Blue Jackets. It's got to be a bounce-back night. Lost 6-1 to one to the Chicago Blackhawks the other day. You've got to, uh, you've got to answer the bell today, don't you? Yeah, you got to answer the bell. There's some big lineup changes that look like it's going to happen here this morning, too. Atkinson looks like he's out. Um, it will be the first time for him this year. I think he's been a healthy scratch. It's a message to the team. They want to try to change things around. There's some depth here now. There's some players. There's a lot of extra players. Looks like Blake Como is going to be in, uh, along with Corey Tropp. 
it's just interesting times because those guys were out uh, and not seeing any light of, of, uh, of the day of, of when they're going to get in. But uh, this team is all business. And uh, I've been watching this pregame skate, and it's a very uh, very business-like approach this morning, and I like it. They started the, they started the day doing four-track drill, just working on some details. Uh, the guys have been out there now for close to 45 minutes, and they're still working pretty hard, and, and uh, they know how urgent, and, and you can feel the urgency for points. So the little changes in the lineup are, are great. And uh, it sends a message, but uh, I like I like how it's uh, they're ready to go here tonight. They did call up Frederick Saint Denis, but Nikita Nikitin's out there skating today. Yeah, it looks like he's going to play, so that's a very good sign for the Blue Jackets. Um, you know, with Ryan Murray and and, and Tootin out, uh, you miss those those players that stay at home like like. Uh, like like and Nikitin, so he looks like he'll play. So that's exciting for the for the Jackets. And that is a great sign. Tonight's game gets underway at eight o'clock. Jody is going to be on Fox Sports Ohio. I'll be on the Blue Jackets Radio Network, and that'll wrap up this morning skate edition of the Inside Edge. You've been listening to the morning skate edition of the Inside Edge. Come back every game day to get the breakdown from Bob McGilligan and Jody Shelley.